Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. Today I need you guys to smash that like button to extend that S. But also too, we're gonna go through Kepler XO. This is a new plugin in FL Studio. I wanna say 21 and above. I can't remember the exact release date. But this plugin is newer in their lineup. Now this plugin um, is really complicated. So I'm not gonna act like this is the easiest plugin to get to know. But I'll give you guys a framework to understand how it modulates the sound. So firstly, when it says DCO right here, these are called oscillators. Okay, so these oscillators create the actual source sound. So DCO1 creates the sound. You guys will get the project files for free as well. Go to busyworksbeats.com slash FL Studio. So if I start talking a different language of sound design, you guys can find the project files there. Now, of course, we can go through presets, but I remember when this first came out, it didn't have presets. So we had to build our own. So it come, let's just see what the presets have. So that's an arpeggio, you have to play multiple notes. Also too, some presets may be a little bland. Let's turn that down, it's super loud. So a lot of these are kind of like, that's a pretty cool sound. You know, these are cool sounds, but it's like, will you ever use these sounds? Okay, so that's the only thing about presets is you, you really have to ask yourself, are you gonna use the preset? Let's see what they have under the brass category. It's a pretty cool effect. So I forget the exact synth this models. I want to say a Juno, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember the exact retro synth that it models. Okay, so we can go through here for all, you know, forever. Let's click in the top left. Let's go back to default. I want to give you guys the power to really morph your own sound. So firstly, change the theme. This will help because it will look like the actual synth that came out back in the day. Let's click this drop down. Let's go to theme. Now, by default, it's on dark. And the reason why you probably can't understand it is because there's no indicators as to what anything does. Okay, so let's go to theme. Let's go to colored. Okay, that's the wrong one. Let's go to colored, and that will add these panels. The reason this is important is because it now looks like the original unit. So it feels more natural. Let's switch it to high quality mode as well. DCO stands for oscillator. This is the sound making thing. You have four basic sound waves. You have a sine wave, which is the fundamental of all sounds. You have a square wave or pulse wave. You have a sawtooth wave and you have a triangle wave. Those are the primary colors in sound design. Now you can also get other waveforms in between, but that, you know, that's what it comes down to. So by default, we need to see, you know, what's our balance, meaning what is the volume of oscillator two and oscillator one. So by default, oscillator two is not turned on. You have to turn it on here and you can hear the additional sound come in. So this is basically the on button for this part. So DCO stands for oscillator. Cross mod means how does oscillator one affect oscillator two or vice versa. Uh, oscillator two is just another sound making thing. Like if these were people, sound making one, or excuse me, person one would be DCO one, person two would be DCO two. So these are like voices of people. And here's the mixer where we can turn stuff down. So if we turn on oscillator two, and then we say it's too loud, we could always turn it down so that it's not super loud. Okay, and then, then we have the next layer. Now here's where we shape the tone. The VCF is Voltage Controlled Filter, I believe that's what the VC stands for. And this is where we start to shape the harmonics of a sound. In short, the difference between a saw wave, a pulse wave, and a triangle wave is the harmonic content. And we call this harmonic content timbre. Okay, so the difference between the sine wave, the square wave, the triangle wave, and all the other waveforms, we could play the same exact note the only difference is the frequency consistency of each sound, the frequency, uh, you know, totality of each sound. Okay, so we'll get into that once we get into sound design. So the filter is basically shaving off if it's a low pass filter. Okay, those higher frequencies and now we get to remove some of those harmonics. In short, making that sawtooth less bitey. And then we can shape the way that it turns down the volume or the way that it, so here's where we get to shape the sound. So in the first row, this is where we create the sound. Row two is where we shape the sound, give it curvature and different 
characteristics. And the third row here is where we uh, we can multiply the sound, we can add frequencies to the sound, we can arpeggiate the sound. So it's more of a macro modulation than it is about shaping the waveform. So once you understand this concept, it makes the synth way more easy to, er, to approach because by default, you don't know what is what and there's so many things going on, it's too much. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into some sound design. Let's just create one solid chord here. Let's make C, so we're, let's start with the bass. You know, by default, we're gonna make this really simple. Uh, let's turn on oscillator two to thicken out the sound. Now also too, uh, actually before we do that, there is an area where we can turn on what's called the sub oscillator. So even if I don't have that bottom layer here, we can go to the sub oscillator and it adds that thick uh, low end frequency to the sound. Basically adding a tone underneath at an octave lower. So we might not need to even add that many notes in the MIDI. But I still want a filled out sound, so let's turn on oscillator two to create that like washy phasery sound. Now I want these sounds to feel different. So by default, this is set to detune by default. Let's right click to reset this. This will create more of a phasey sound the more uh, like and tune these are. So if oscillator one has the same tuning as oscillator two and they play at the same time, they'll create phasing. Which it sounds like this moving washy sound. Now as I detune oscillator two, it will sound more like a flanger or a chorus sound. All right, so that's how we get, you know, stereo width out of sounds. If I pan sound two from sound one and they're slightly different in pitch, that's how I can create stereo width. Now by default, I don't see an easy pan button. So that's interesting. Uh, I'm sure it's somewhere. I just can't eyeball where it would be. All right, so another way to do that is add chorus down here. In the bottom here, it says chorus. Let's turn this on mode two. The Juno is known for its like chorus module. There's two modes, one and two, and you can combine the two. All right, so now it feels wider. Um, again, I wish there was a way, or maybe there's a way to pan oscillator two, but I'm not aware of it just yet. That's why I said the synth is so complicated, even for a sound designer like myself. Okay, now that we've created the two sounds, what I want to do now is turn on the filter modulation. First, I wanna set the destination for where the filter needs to move. So this is the lowest value that the filter will, will achieve. Nextly, I need to tell it what needs to move the filter. I'm gonna give this envelope one control over this filter knob. So the envelope one is right here. Now, if I set LFO one to control the filter, it will use this panel here to control this knob here. So envelopes, you know, the main difference between an envelope and an LFO, a low frequency oscillator, an envelope has a start and a finish. An LFO keeps going. That's the basic difference between the two. Okay, so let's set an envelope here. Now we want a more brassy tone, so let's give it a small attack, small decay, and then a little tiny release. So now it's gonna have like a brassy tone. And let's mess with the filter cutoff to start shaping this tone. Now the longer the decay, the more uh, time it takes to fade. We can also turn up what's called resonance to create more of an 80s type of sweep. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll start actually writing the chord here. Let's make this like C minor. And then let's make another chord. And then let's do a suspended second chord on the second chord. Let's just drop the minor third down. Let's make like a Scarface type sound. So right now the sound is very dark, very full. Let's see if we can pull this up and out. Let's just pull this bass. There we go. Okay, so I still think it could use more bright frequencies. So envelope one, this knob here, or this fader here, is determining the max value. So if I pull this down, the max value for this filter fader to move, it will go from like here to here. Whereas if I turn this envelope all the way up, this will go from the bottom position all the way up to the top and then back. So this sets the range of movement. Now I'll do one thing here so that we can actually hear it. I have to turn off the filter. Let's add an LFO 
over the tuning. Now this is where it gets a little complicated because now we have to go back to the beginning for the modulators right here. So I want LFO1 to be some kind of basic waveform. Now it's not really even giving me what shape it is. I have no idea what shape this is. But LFO1, we are going to tempo sync this. It's, I'm reading values in the top left. Let's go to the top left of the plugin here. And then we can start to hear that movement. Okay, so I'm doing this to both sounds. Now LFO2, okay, I just realized that's a different source. Okay, so we also want that LFO1 to modulate the oscillator 2 so they're equal. So let's right click, copy this value, and paste that by right clicking, hitting V. So now they're both moving. And all we have to do now is lower the amount. So let's say it's wobbling too much. Instead of messing with the LFO, which is the another oscillator, we're going to turn down the amount. So let's just pull this fader down. And then let's slow down the rate a little bit. Make it more of an 80s wobble than it is like a woo woo, -woo like vibrato. So you can hear there's a subtle pitch wobble. Let's pull our filters back. Okay, so we can do different things like a high pass filter to cut out the lows. It's so a quick little thing there. You could do filter uh, frequency modulation, which is a little more advanced. This basically changes the way the filter moves. You can modulate it with a sine wave, triangle wave. It gets very complex. I'll just turn these faders up and down just to see if it adds anything. Now, I don't know how we can control what is controlling this filter. It doesn't really say what is controlling this. So I don't read manuals. I'm not sure what exactly is controlling the filter. Where which oscillator is, I'm not sure. It's not clear. But as you guys can probably hear, this cool artifacts we're adding. So now we're using oscillator one to control the filter. I like the sawtooth ramp. Now let's lower the amount so it doesn't open the filter all the way. So these are very subtle movements. You're not going to really, if you were, if I didn't tell you guys that step, you probably wouldn't notice that. Nextly, let's open up what's called the hyper chorus. Actually, we already have chorus, but there's another thing called hyper chorus. And to make this sound bigger, let's actually turn on reverb. And now we have a really cool, unique sound. So that is how you know we can create our first sound. We have our harmony sound. Let's open up a new Kepler XO. Now keep in mind this plugin is not like a quick mess with a couple knobs, get a dope sound out of it. Unless you're going through presets. So I will say this is not really for a beginner at all. So I'm gonna move a little bit quicker here. Let's create a bass sound. Let's take these bottom notes, paste them. We have to decide what do we want to do with this tone. Firstly, I like the sawtooth sound, but let's filter it out with a filter to get rid of some of the bite. And now I want the sound wider, so let's look at some chorus. 
maybe some hyper course. A little hard to hear. So really, I don't want it, this sound to do too much. Uh, we can modulate the envelope. So it's basically giving it a small transient. All right, so the sound doesn't really need to do much else. And let's create a top line. Now for this sound, we're gonna create an arpeggio. It might be a little too much rhythm, but let's copy and paste and let's use the arpeggio mode. So one thing, the one main thing I skipped over, now it also has a mod area too where we can get more complex, but I'll save that for a different tutorial. So here, I'm not gonna worry about the filter just yet. Let's go straight to the arpeggio section. Let's turn this on. There's different modes here. So you have up mode, up and down mode, down mode, random one, two, three, and four, and then as played mode, and then I don't know what these are. Let's just do up mode, and the range is gonna be three octaves. So when I play a note, it will play three octaves of the note. That will give the chords room to breathe and move around. Uh, we can also change the speed of the arpeggio here. So all I want to do for this sound is not do too much, I just want to add a little release to give it pseudo reverb. Let's also give it a small pitch bend, I forgot we could do this. Let's do envelope 2, and this is really advanced, so as if you guys are a beginner, this is more so inspiration than trying to teach you guys something. We're just adding a small pitch bend to the sound. So it goes like chow, 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 every single hit. That just grips the ear a little bit. And then we'll also do the same thing here. The filter. So now we have more of a plucky type sound. Now it's not clear which envelope controls, you know, the uh, amp latitude of both oscillator one and two it's not very clear if that's envelope one or two but i believe it's envelope one but we did that over the filter so i'm not sure exactly let me see yeah it's, it's not very clear now let's start adding some delay and reverb I'm gonna add an LFO over the pitch so that way we kind of have a similar movement to our brass. I might even go back to the brass to copy these values that way I'm not guessing here because I want them to match perfectly. All right, so that was down a little bit further. So again, if you're a beginner, do not try to follow every single step here. This is more so just trying to show you guys. Let's add oscillator two for more tone. We can also do pulse width modulation to create a sound. So even if you don't want a sawtooth, we could add pulse width modulation, which is a different way to create harmonics. So again, here we're not getting too crazy with the sound. Also, too, we have saturation. Let's see what this sounds like. 
that definitely makes it more upfront. Okay, but normally I wouldn't have the arpeggio that loud. Okay, so let's just arrange some of these ideas. And what I will do here is modulate the channel volume. So as you guys can see, it's a really powerful synth once you grasp how to layer sounds. So the saturation was important for the sound. We could also add saturation to the brass. I just don't want to overly make it. But if you wanted like a, the weekend type sound, you could definitely add saturation. I think the brass sounds really good. Now again, can we make this full sound with just one preset? Let's see what it sounds like with just the brass. You get about 50 to 70% of the way there, but that bass layer really makes it full. And the arpeggio adds the detail. So to really get the maximum, you know, expression out of this, I would recommend you guys try at least two layers for this plugin instead of just trying to stack everything into one sound. Because with older synths like this, you're getting a more direct sound as opposed to um, like, you know, more modern kind of stacked morph sounds that have combinations of these core sounds. Long story short, if you guys want to learn more about FL Studio, I have a free course. Just go to busyworksbeats.com slash premium and learn more about our FL Studio for Beginners course, FL Studio 21 for Beginners. And also guys, at the end of the year, we do a deal. So that's going on right now. It's called the Black Box Bundle. It's all of my courses, 68 plus music production courses, plus six of my plugins, plus all of our sound packs, all in one. So just go to busyworksbeats.com slash premium. I'll leave a link below. Um, but that was all I wanted to show you guys was the power of Kepler XO. All right guys, subscribe if you're new, peace.